Hello and welcome to the seventh and final episode of the Steez Economy series for Prelims 2021. The first thing which was in news, G33. Now, what is G33? It is basically a forum for developing countries. They get together and discuss the important issues related to world trade and agriculture and similar things among themselves. So, basically, a forum for developing countries. It is called G33. But presently, 44 countries are part of this group and they belong to all regions of the world, as you can see uh, from this map. India is also a member, so is China, so is Pakistan, so is Indonesia. These are the important countries you can choose to remember. Now, it includes around 4.30 billion of the world's population, which comes to around 55% of the world population and yet 27% of the global economy. This, these are the facts and you can look at the disparity 55% of the population and 27% of the global economy and that is why they are called developing countries. Moving on further, now uh, it was in news because WTO uh, round is going to be conducted towards the end of this year in 2021 and we need to know certain terms re related to uh, WTO rules specifically dealing with agriculture which have been often in news and have also been asked in UPSC in previous years. So, one such term is amber box. Before dealing with these boxes, let us discuss what are the issues in brief, what are the issues of agriculture that come under discussion whenever there is a WTO ministerial meet. So, countries like India, they have uh, this food security uh, program in their countries and for ensuring this food security, one, they purchase crops, certain crops, 22 crops as of now uh, at MSP and then they store and distribute it in the form of PDS, public distribution system. So, this is the food security regime of the India or bedrock of the food security regime in India and this support price which is provided and the storage which is done and the distribution which is done at a very minimal cost, it almost contradicts, contradicts the worldview of the WTO uh, which is based on free trade. So, but at the same time, WTO also recognizes that agriculture is a bit complex issue rather than other commodities which, rather than other commodities in the uh, world trade. So, it has certain boxes. These boxes resemble the traffic light system of the world. So, amber represents that they should be slowed down. Such measures which are included in the amber box should be slowed down. There is a red box also. There is no red box in agriculture, but there is a red box also means these activities should be prohibited and there are there is a green box. So, measures included in the green box uh, can be continued. Especially for agriculture, there is a blue box. We will discuss the blue, uh, blue box as well. So, this is the background of uh, discussion which we will be continuing further. So, amber box uh, of WTO, it includes all the domestic support measures considered to distort production and trade. There are some exceptions to this, but this is the basic idea that the support which is being provided and uh, the measures which are undertaken to provide this support, they distort production and trade and yet they are allowed. At the same time, the idea is that it has to be reduced gradually. MSP, uh, the minimum support price provided by Indian government recommended by CACP. So, MSP and the procurement of food grains which we just discussed, they, these measures are included in the amber box of WTO. So, a very important fact from exam perspective. Now, it excludes all those measures which are included in blue and green boxes. We will discuss what uh, these measures are. Measures that support prices or include subsidies related to production volume, they are also included in amber box. So, MSP is basically support price uh, provided by government to the farmers. So, it is included in the amber box. Moving on further, there is a blue box we discussed. This is specifically meant for agricultural uh, commodities and it is called the amber box with conditions. And these are conditions which have been designed to reduce distortion. 
Uh, what is distortion basically? So, if a country is providing subsidies to farmers or uh, to agriculturalists, so the production will be high and since that production will be high and that will harm the export import regime of various countries. So, that is called distortion. So, those conditions which are designed to reduce this distortion, those measures which reduce this distortion are included under blue box and uh, if support requires farmers to limit production, then it is placed in blue box because that will reduce the distortion and there is no limit on spending uh, under this box. Uh, unlike uh, the amber box which we just discussed, under amber box, developed countries uh, have a limit of spending up to 5% on uh, subsidies while uh, developing countries can spend up to 10%. Moving on further, then there is a green box. Green box that does not distort trade or cause minimal distortion. Those measures are included here. They have to be government funded and they must not involve price support. Uh, so, stock holding, distribution, such things are covered under green box that, that, that has a measures to provide food security. Now, it also includes environmental protection and regional development programs. And again, like the blue box, these are permitted without limitations, provided they comply with the policy measures which have been specified under green box. Moving on further, we said why it has been in use because there is a WTO ministerial conference, the 12th one, which is scheduled uh, in November, December this year, 30th November to 3rd December this year at Geneva in 2021. At the same time, we should know that WTO, it's, it is headquartered at Geneva in Switzerland. It was established in 1995 and before its establishment, there were a huge round, there were huge round of uh, negotiations which concluded between it, 1986 to 1994. The membership includes almost all the countries, not all, but almost all, 164 members are there representing 98% of the world trade. So, that is all about the WTO ministerial conference which is going to be held. Remember, it is going to be co-hosted uh, co by Kazakhstan this year. Moving on further, Human Development Index was in news. First important fact, which body releases this index? It is released by United Nations Development Program. Now, the second bit, India is ranked 131st this year in this index. There is a decline of two positions. It was placed 129 in 2019. In 2020, now it is placed at 131st position, which is the forerunner. Norway is again ranked first in this list. Usually Nordic countries, uh, they uh, are the forerunners in this list. See, Ireland uh, is at the second rank. Switzerland is at the third place. In the South Asia, Bhutan 129, Bangladesh 132. 133, Nepal 142 and Pakistan 154. So, obviously the competition is not in South Asia, but still India needs to improve. Moving on further, what HDI measures? So, if you look at it, HDI measures a decent standard of living, long and healthy life and the knowledge. So, basically three factors, they determine the HDI rank of any country. So, it is a measure of health, 1, education, 2, and standard of living, 3. These three factors should be remembered. They form the core of HDI index. Now, as per, as per the HDI index, life expectancy of India in Indians in 2019 is 69.7 years. Uh, the schooling expectancy, how much uh, individual in India gains schooling experience, it is 12.2 years in 2019. Uh, something about UNDP, UNDP is a United Nations Development Agency. The aim of this agency is to reduce poverty and inequality in 170 countries. It was established in 1965. So, it was not there when the U United Nations was founded in 1945. It emerged later. It was founded in uh, 1965 by the United Nations General Assembly. Moving on further, there was a previous year question. This question has been included just to give you an idea that what pieces of information can be asked in your PSC exam uh, from such reports. 
So we know that World Bank releases ease of doing business report or index. So there has been a question on this once. Thereafter, there was a question that which of the following is not a sub-index of the World Bank's ease of doing business report. So these four things, these four options were given. This option is not a part of World Bank's ease of doing business index. All the other sub-indexes were in use because mostly India made a growth in all of these indexes except for a few like contracts. So this question is not uh, that important now. What you need to know that you also need to remember the sub-indices or the parameters on which a report is based. Moving on further, Atma Nirbhar Bharat Rozgar Yojana was in news. Now, uh, it was in news because it was approved by the government of India. Why? To promote employment in the formal sector. The time period uh, of this scheme is 2020 to 2023. The government will give subsidy for two years to those employees who join this formal workforce between 1st October 2020 and 30th June 2021, especially after the employment has, has been making news for not so uh, good reasons. So government came up with this uh, yojana or a scheme. Under this scheme, all such units which employ up to 1000 people. So in these units, the government of India will pay both the 12% employee contribution as well as the 12% employer's contribution, that is 24% in respect of the employer's provident fund, EPF, to their new employees for two years. So it is basically subsidizing the functioning units to employ more and more people and will subsidize their EPF contribution. Now, if uh, the number of employees is more than 1000, then the government will only pay the employee's contribution. Employer's contribution will will have to be paid by the company. Moving on further, the employee whose monthly income is less than 15,000 and is not working in any unit registered uh, with EPFO before this uh, cutoff date of 1st October 2020, or if that employee uh, does not have uh, this uh, number, it will, he or she will also be able to take benefit of this scheme. So EPFO will credit any contribution only to the Aadhaar linked account of that member. This information is not that important. What, was, what is important that what is the scheme, what this scheme aims at doing and what exactly is the kind of subsidy which the government is providing that is to EPF account of the uh, employee. Moving on further, Investment Promotion Award was in news. Now, UN Investment Promotion Award 2020 was given to Invest India. This award is bestowed upon by a specialized agency of United Nations, UNCTAD. And this is considered to be the most prestigious award for investment promotion agencies. We know about Invest India. We discussed in episode number five about Invest India. It's, it's a, it is an specialized agency to promote investment. We know, will know about it a bit more and again uh, very soon. So this award recognizes the outstanding achievements and work of the investment promotion agencies around the world. The evaluation is based on UNCTAD's assessment of work undertaken by 180 investment promotion agencies. The agencies like Invest India, they are there in uh, countries across the world and UNCTAD uh, evaluates their work. This award was started in 2002 and it, it has been given annually since then. So it, as we said, it uh, highlights the contribution of investment promotion organization in increasing private sector investment in sustainable development and achieving the sustainable development goals. Now, we know Invest India has been uh, act very active in promoting private investment in India. It was formed in 2009. It is a not-for-profit investment uh, inducing agency or venture undertaken by DPIIT, which works under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. These are the various activities which have been uh, done by the Invest India Agency. These activities are not that important. What you need to remember that Invest Promotion Award has been given to Invest India. This award is given by UNCTAD, which is a specialized agency of United Nations. And it's Invest India functions under DPIIT, which is under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Moving on further, negative yield bonds. Now, China has for the first time issued 
negative yield debt or negative yield bonds in the market and it sounds very counterintuitive that why someone would purchase negative yield bonds that is after maturity these bonds will give amount less than what has been invested by the individual or by the entity we'll discuss the reasons first these bonds have seen huge demand among the european investors we'll see why the reason basically is they are the in uh, yields in europe uh, europe have already plummeted to very low levels still why to invest in negative yield bonds we'll see now in negative yields bonds yield bond we just discussed investors get the maturity price less than the purchase price and these bonds usually are issued by central banks or governments so the investment uh, increases in such kinds of bonds during the times of stress and uncertainty which is which is the perfect uh, disclaimer of the times for uh, as of now that is of covid-19 pandemic and in europe and in most of the developed world interest rates are already very low gdp of major economies has plummeted have plummeted uh, due to corona impact meanwhile china has registered a positive growth china's gdp grew at 4.9% in the third quarter of 2020 while this is low as per the standards of china but given in the given the condition of world is it still is a very respectable number now the exact reasons why investors might buy the negative yield debt one these bonds offer security it comes at a cost that is uh, you are getting lesser return or, or basically a negative return on your purchase value but still your money is secure uh, so it is assured that after the time uh, lapses you will get almost whole of your amount or slightly less than the purchase value so the security uh, if paramount for an investor he or she may uh, or the body may choose to invest in a negative yield debt or negative yield bond then there are chances of making quick quick uh, trading profits why because once these bonds are issued and entities purchase them there are chances that the conditions in the world economy plummet further and the demand for these bonds may increase and as will as these as the demand will increase price of these bonds in secondary market may see a rise so there is a chance of quick trading profit then the expected currency move uh, moves also influence this decision so maybe a bond in us or europe may be uh, offering slightly positive returns but given the currency movement that what will be the position of the currency in which the bond has been issued it also influences the investors decision and perhaps people believe that chinese currency will outgrow or the growth in chinese currency so growth in strength of chinese currency will outshine the growth in other currencies uh, further when the bond is still still safe so as we said during the uncertain times if people are choosing safety over risk taking because the times are very uncertain then bonds are a very good investment and that is why people may choose to invest in negative yield bonds and then people also take this decision on the basis of the idea that even after having a negative yield is it going to have a net positive purchasing power because if the currency is appreciating and there is going to be a net deflation in the economy then even after having a negative yield this amount will fetch more commodities so basically there will be profit so this is also a reason why uh, people may choose to buy negative yield bonds so this this are the these are the set of reasons why there there is still a huge demand for chinese bonds which are going to have a negative yield moving on further 15th finance commission report was released or was submitted to the president this these this report it contains the recommendations for distribution of funds for a period of 2021-22 to 25-26 in under in this report there was a very important announcement that is creation of a new non lapsable fund to finance national security because otherwise usually the fund is issued for an annual year and when this year lapses the budget year lapses the fund also lapses but 
the national security projects they have longer time period longer gestation time period and that is why this non lapsable fund has been made available and it will take care of the defense spending there have been several performance incentives to states which have also been included again in this recommendations by 15th finance commission the 15th finance commission was constituted for the period of 2021 to 2024 25 but due to corona pandemic an interim report was released for 2021 and the next recommendations were set for were made for the aforementioned time period under these recommendations the state share has been reduced in the central pool of taxes from 42% uh, which was the 14th finance commission recommendation to 41% these these facts does this data must be remembered it can be a part of a statement kind of questions in upsc examination now the title of the report was finance commission in covid times and apart from the main report uh, two more volumes were submitted two more uh, two more volumes were released first one takes the stock of financial position of the central government and the second one takes in depth financial analysis of each state we should also remember that nk singh the retired bureaucrat is the chairman of the 15th commission moving on further kisan credit card scheme was in news it was in news but it is a very old scheme it was started in 1998 prepared by nabard on the recommendations of rv gupta committee so rv gupta committee becomes important now this scheme was carried forward in 2004 to meet the investment credit needs of farmers for a light as well as non farm activities we will discuss the activities for which the uh, kisan credit card can be used there has been a question in statement kind uh, kinds of question in upsc so you need to know this we will discuss it in detail ahead so re review of the plan was done by a committee under tm bhasin in 2012 so this aims at providing flexible and simplified systems to farmer so that they can take loan they can take the money required to invest in their agricultural activities under a single window from the banking system so basically adequate and timely timely is very important and here is where credit card uh, the kisan credit card schemes becomes a real winner so adequate and timely credit assistance for the following is provided one to meet short term credit requirements for cultivation of crops very obvious post harvest expenses they are included it should be remembered then marketing loan produce marketing loan can also be availed under this scheme then farmers domestic consumption needs people are often confused that kisan credit card can also only be used for agricultural production and related activities but even farmers domestic needs so a loan can be availed for it capital can be availed for it and working capital for maintenance of farm assets and activities allied to agriculture they are also included and uh, if there is any need for investment credit for agriculture and, and allied activities that is also provided under kisan credit card scheme so who are eligible for this scheme so it also tells us the expansion in the definition of kisan or the farmers which has been done under this scheme so individual farmers or joint borrowers who are farm owners they are eligible obvious now tenant farmers oral lessees who has taken the farm land on lease or share coppers bataidars they are also included under this scheme so this is more important to be remembered because this sounds obvious now self help groups or joint liability groups of farmers tenant farmers and sharecroppers they are also included and the documents needed are aadhar card voter id driving license pan card passport etc so the intended beneficiaries they include many people who are related to the uh, agricultural sector so the intended beneficiaries include not only the land owning farmers but also the tenant farmers oral lessees and lessees and uh, share croppers moving on further it provides collateral free loan up to 1.60 lakh 
the quantum is loan quantum of loan is for one year and it is addressed on the basis of cost of cultivation post harvest expenses and cost of farm maintenance so not only cost of cultivation but also post harvest expenses and cost cost of farm maintenance is included while calculating the quantum of loan which can be offered and interest is the simple interest charged uh, from 4% to 7% per annum which is quite less than the other credit card interest rates the other thing in, in news was pradhan mantri kisan mandhan yojana it was launched way back in 2019 so basically it aimed at providing social security to small and marginal farmers who are small and marginal farmers so small small farmers they own land less than 2 hectares or 5 acres and marginal farmers they own less land less than 1 hectare or 2.5 acres they form more than 80% of the indian agricultural community or the indian farmers the nodal ministry for pradhan mantri kisan man dhan yojana again important information ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare now this may seem very obvious to you right now but in the examination room you may confuse it with ministry of finance or similar ministries so remember ministry of Ag agriculture and farmers welfare is the nodal ministry for pradhan mantri kisan man dhan yojana the objective is to provide minimum 3000 per month pension to small and marginal farmers on attaining a age of 60 years and the beneficiaries small and marginal farmers yes we discussed of age 80 to 40 years having cultivable land up to 2 hectares we discussed the definition of small and marginal farmers so 2 hectares is also obvious 80 18 to 40 years is to be remembered now how it will be done so it will be voluntary and contributory pension it is not compulsory and government will also contribute a bit so the applicant of 18 to 40 years has to deposit 55 to 220 per month till the age of 60 years so the beneficiary between 18 to 40 has to start investing 55 to 220 rupees to 20 rupees per month and once he attains the age of uh, 60 years minimum 3 3000 rupees of pension will be provided each month around 5 crore small and marginal farmers will benefit from this scheme we mentioned the amount 3000 per month to till uh, after the age of 60 years and if the farmer dies unfortunately the farmer's spouse uh, is entitled to 50% of the pension as family pension this is also to be remembered because once similar kind of statement has been given in a similar kind of scheme atal pension yojana so you need to remember that if uh, what if the spouse dies so 50% of the pension will be provided as family pension so with pradhan mantri kisan man dhan yojana we come to the conclusion of this episode prelims is approaching we wish you all the best for your studies good luck